Welcome to Contramundum Promundo. I'm your host, Richard, and this is the introduction video. What is this? Why are we watching this channel? Uh, it's Latin, actually. It means against the world for the sake of the world. So against the world but for the sake of the world. So contra, right, is against like contradiction, right? Or that wonderful game from the 80s, Contra. Pro, of course, pro is for something, you know, pros and cons. It's against the world, mundo, right? For the world. Against the world for the sake of the world. I desire to to love the world, but not in the way in the world was or is uh, and remains, just as Jesus did, but rather to challenge the world, to challenge people in their thinking on how uh, we think about history, how we think about politics, how we think about uh, just everyday life. What are we supposed to do in this world? Is this all just for naught? Are we just chemicals? Are we just materialized things that bounce around for a few years and then we just disappear? Or is there more to that? So Jesus challenged the world. He saw the world as it was. Just if you go all the way back to the beginning of the Bible, Genesis 3, we see the first people created. They fall into sin. God says, don't do this. They do it. And he curses the ground. And the whole creation groans, the Apostle Paul says, and, and waits eagerly for the redemption of the sons of men or, or humanity. That's a big deal. And if that's true, that has deep ramifications on you, on me, and everybody else. If it's not true, then it doesn't really matter. C.S. Lewis says it's either vitally important or not important at all. It just can't be kind of important. Right? That's a big deal. It's either vitally important or not important at all. Big difference. Before we get too far, what are some other phrases in Latin you might be thinking, dude, why would you use such a weird name? Just pick something simple like, you know, Bible hour or do, you know, a history channel, worldview, something. Latin is one of our languages that has foundations all over the place. Carpe diem, there's one. Ad hoc. There's another one. Bona fide, de facto, or in fact. E.G. or I.E., those are both written directly from Latin. Status quo, vice versa. Versus, yes. There's a ton of them. Anyway, my point is that Latin's everywhere. And when we have something, it, it, it stands for something more than just the plain word. So against the world for the sake of the world. John 16, 33. Jesus says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. So Jesus came to the world to save sinners. God so loved the world, yet at the same time, the world is broken, the world has fallen, the world is not good as it is. The world needs redemption. This is for Jesus. This is for to proclaim his name. And if, again, he is who he says he is, he is Lord, he's the God-man, he offers redemption. He offers forgiveness and salvation to anyone who believes through faith alone. That's vitally important. If it's not, well, then ignore, turn it off. But it can't be kind of important. As a follower of Jesus, I have to be light to the world. We're called to be lights. Jesus, and again, we are imperfect people. <laughs> That's the trouble. He doesn't save somebody. He doesn't bring him into communion, him or her into communion, and then all of a sudden they're perfect. It, there's not this level of perfection, but this ongoing trust in the Lord until he comes back, as he says he would, or you die. Either one. Jesus has come into the world, the, the mundo, to save sinners. King James Version, 1 Timothy 15, 1 15, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance, that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. I love that. Apostle Paul writing that there. I am chief. Paul saying, I am the chief sinner. English Standard Version, John 12, 14, 46. I have come into the world as light so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. NIV says in John 9, 39, For judgment I have come into the world so that the blind will see and those who see will become blind. Mm. So again, he's using a parallel there, but he's speaking, of course, of those who see, they act like they see, because they're haughty, they're proud, they're arrogant, but blessed are the humble, Jesus says. that Jesus came to engage them. He challenged the religious establishment. I'd be really interested to see who he would challenge today. We look at Romans chapter 3.23, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. 
We see later in that book that the whole creation, as I mentioned, groans, right? Earthquakes, tornadoes, famine, disease, fires, pestilence, you name it. This world is not the way it is, and we feel it. We know, we think, oh, why is it something different? That's why we have governments that want to fix the problem. That's why people say, well, if people, you know, they just learned a little bit more, if they just did a little bit more, if they just did this, that, and the other, if we pass some more laws, we had some more training, we could figure it out. The problem is we still have sin. It goes back again to John 3.16. For God so loved the world. So God of the Old Testament, that God the Father, loved the world. He gave His Son. He incarnate. There's another word, ah, carne, carnate. Now, if you speak Spanish or Portuguese, you're going to know that far easier. But carne, of course, is flesh. So carne asada, mm, so good. I met some people recently, by the way, that had not had carne asada. If you've not had carne asada, well, click and like and subscribe. But um, besides that, go have some carne asada. Find a good place. It's harder in certain parts of the world than others. Oh boy, oh boy. Oh, it's good. He humiliated himself, taking the form of a bond servant, being made in the likeness of human flesh. He humbled himself for you, for me. It's amazing. I mean, it, 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 if you think about it, if you really let it sink in and don't just deflect and say, ah, I don't need that, Jesus. Nah, I don't need that. Let it sink in. And if you are a follower of Jesus, you know what I'm talking about. So that's it. This channel exists to, to challenge people, to, to show what Christians, what followers of Jesus ought to do. We're, we're to bring the scriptures to bear. We're going to read them. We're going to look at them. Jesus is a big deal, right? We have history itself is divided. B.C. and A.D. Now there's people that try and change that to B.C.E. and C.E., but it's still the same year, so it's rather ironic. Look at music politics, economics, and all sorts of different things. I'm not going to be able to look at everything. Absolutely not. There's no way. Let me know if you want me to touch on something. All this is going to be viewed through the lens of the Bible, of the Gospel, of, of Jesus Christ, of God the Father sending Jesus the Son into the world to save sinners, to live, to die, to resurrect. I pray this finds you well, that you will maybe be informed, that you will be challenged, you'll be convicted, uh, that you'll be encouraged. So like and subscribe. Until next time, be contramundum promundo.